Hello, my friends. Jacob is here again. Yes, it's not even been 24 hours. And here I am again with another video, another insane, uh, amazing, eye-opening video. I had to share this. I couldn't wait a couple of days on this because I did a video on this uh, I guess it was probably about maybe four months ago called The Matrix Has You about simulation theory. I want you all to check it out. I'm going to have the link in the description and it'll go into a lot more detail because I want to keep this one close. But the bottom line is today, today we have almost without a shadow of a doubt proof that we're living in a hologram. hologram. These uh, physicists have found proof. And once more, it actually lends more credibility to the Mandela effect and a lot of the cool stuff that we've been looking at. So guess what? Buckle up. We're talking holograms today, people. All right, so imagine everything that you see, touch, taste, smell, everything that you experience, right? In the 3D world is actually just a linear line of information that starts from the beginning to the end, like a computer program. That's what some big brain people over the University of Southampton in the UK, as well as other big brain people at other universities, have come to understand. Uh, they say the study by Costas Skinderis um, explains in the statement that the idea is similar to that of ordinary holograms where a three-dimensional image is encoded in a two-dimensional surface, such as the hologram you find on like a credit card or, um, you know, like even those new dollar bills. However, this time, the entire universe is encoded. Everything that we perceive as, you know, height, depth, width, whatever, is really just an illusion. It's not real at all. Now, a lot of people have asked me, you know, why do you think the Mandela effect has begun? And I've, I've ha I have a couple of theories about that, but one of the theories was um, the simulation theory, which, um, like I said before, go check out that video if you know nothing about it. Elon Musk was uh, famously quoted as saying that it's a billion times more likely that we're living in a simulation than not. And a simulation would explain this Mandela effect. It would explain how things that we remember one way have historically changed, like there's a, a glitch in the matrix, huh? because that possibly is what has gone down. You remember one thing a certain way, but yet the coding, this linear coding, somehow has changed. Now, the best part about that is possibly it could be changed from the inside, from us collectively putting our energy into it. That's another theory. But the bottom line is, Skinderis and his team tested out the holographic principle by taking data of cosmic irregularities in the relative aftermath of the Big Bang and applying the information to holographic models. By doing so, they explained that there is now substantial evidence that this is all some big simulation. Some big hologram. Philip K. Dick, um, I've talked about him before, but I'm going to remind you of the amazing thing he said, because now with the Mandela effect, what he says really bears a striking resemblance to what the Mandela effect is, where he said that he's going to tell you that he believes without a shadow of a doubt that we are living in some kind of a computer simulation, and that the only way we would know that we're in some kind of a holographic computer simulation is if things changed. Take a look. We are living in a computer programmed reality 
And the only clue we have to it is when some variable is changed and some alteration in our reality occurs. We would have the overwhelming impression that we were reliving the present deja vu, perhaps in precisely the same way, hearing the same words, saying the same words. I submit that these impressions are valid and significant. And I will even say this, such an impression is a clue that at some past time point, a variable was changed, reprogrammed as it were, and that because of this, an alternative world branched off. And I thought that he was crazy for doing so. Family members of mine and friends of mine think I'm crazy for doing videos on this. And yet, now the facts are lining up with, you know, what we've been saying for a long time. None of this is legitimately real. It's more like an illusion, which is a wonderful thing because that gives us such um, hope for our future. Because if this is a simulation per se, and we are like the spirits that are somehow in these avatar bodies walking around in this holographic universe, then that means that, you know, the sky's the limit for what we can accomplish. So when our hardships are working against us, maybe they're there to basically help us to level up, you know? In like a video game so we can take it to the next level and i know every one of you watching today there you're the kind of people that want to take it to the next level you're the kind of people that aren't sitting back on the way things used to be you're the kind of people that are now going to live for more a life of faith jesus said with faith all things are possible you could say to this sycamore tree, be thou cast into the sea, and it'll listen. You could say to the mountain, be thou cast into the sea, and it'll listen. The mountains that are in our life, the things that are against us, the things that we say they're too big for us to overcome. All we got to do is say, get thee hence, and it can be gone, because with faith, all things are possible. Now look, the simulation theory, it's not just a couple of big brain people over at the University of Southampton. No, no, no. The uh, Medal of Science winner himself, uh, the brilliant James Gates. You know, he's the, uh, the, the physicist that is the, um, the quantum theory man. You know, he's all about quantum principles and quantum mechanics. And he's, you know, kind of known as the leader in this field. Well, guess what? When he was looking at the equations that describe the universe as it is, as a whole, what he found was computer code. But not just any computer code, computer code like that of a browser. How ain't that something? So, bottom line, people. I had to do this video really quick because I did this video on simulation theory and I hope you check it out. And a lot of people said, oh, ain't no way, there ain't no way. Well, the bottom line is, is now there is substantial evidence that we are indeed existing in a holographic universe. The best part is Einstein's theory of general relativity explains almost everything, right? Large scale in the universe, but it starts to unravel when examining its origins and the mechanisms. The best part about this is, the simulation theory, the holographic idea of the universe, it basically ties everything together beautifully. It's all connected, people. Anyway, I hope you have the best day ever. I hope you enjoyed this little update. I was really excited to see it because I've been feeling like, you know, all of this stuff that's happening around us, even this story that's playing out in the uh, political arena and around the world, it's all like a big game, right? So stop taking a back seat, jump in, play the game and enjoy it. And let's collectively create a better world for us all, right? After all, we can affect the whole if we just focus on ourselves. I love you all. And I will see you next week on Wednesday. Talk to you soon. Mwah.